Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Betsy Bohan and I'm answering difficult questions pertaining to the Bible, Biblical Christianity, and God from a Christian Biblical viewpoint. Stay with me today as I talk about does God love me even when I'm wicked. I'll be back in a moment. Thanks for joining me back here. Hmm, the question, does God love me when I'm wicked, is clearly answered in the Bible, even reading throughout the Old Testament into the New Testament. God's whole heart, in fact, towards us is one of love and restoration. Sometimes, when we under, don't understand that we have consequences for our choices. We think that God doesn't love us when we're wicked. No, God loves us when we're wicked, but he also is a just God. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about that using the Old and New Testament. Now remember, I'm giving you food for thought, but I would encourage you to open up your heart to God the God of the Bible, as answered in uh, Exodus, sorry, Exodus 3, 14 and 15, when Moses asked God for his name, and God says, I am, I am that I am, and I will be what I will be. This is the name I'm to be known for all generations. I am in Hebrew is Yahweh. It's also called the Tetragrammon. And that's something you can certainly look up and maybe I'll make a video about that sometime and what that means. But today, I'm answering the question of many people. In fact, one that I had myself, have had myself, does God love me even when I'm wicked? If we look at the Old Testament and we understand first off that God made man and woman for relationship with him that he enjoyed until, of course, as people and humans do, we made our own choice to go against him and the rules that he set in place for our benefit because we are finite creatures and cannot see beyond even the nose on our face. We can't even see the nose on our face without looking in a mirror or crossing our eyes. So. How do we even think that we could truly understand all things in life and what is beyond just the physical and beyond our temporary lives? Well, there's three places that God makes it very clear that He loves people and He wants the wicked to turn back to Him. He doesn't want them to perish in their wickedness. You can find this in Ezekiel 18, 23, and 32, and Ezekiel 33, 11. They all basically say the same thing. And I have memorized Ezekiel 33, 11 because I think it's such a pertinent and important verse to know. Because, well, it just is. And in Ezekiel 33:11, God is saying through the prophet Ezekiel, as I live, says the Lord God, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but would rather that they would repent and turn from their wicked ways and live. Now he was talking about Israel, but if you study the Bible you will know and there's many verses that say that Israel was to be blessed as a nation so that they could become a blessing to the world and other nations through them could be blessed and in the New Testament that takes it even further because we find out through Jesus Christ the Messiah that he was actually the one that brought so that Jew and Christian 
could be in the same household of faith through the same Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so Jesus, being the exact imprint of the invisible God, as says in Hebrews 1 verse 3 and Colossians chapter 1 verse 15, that he is the exact representation of the Father. And you read in the Gospels about how did Jesus treat the wicked, the sinners, you will see that he had love for them and his desire was to make them whole, to heal them, to free them of their sins and to bring them into the kingdom. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life and that he makes a way to enter into the kingdom and to restore relationship back to the Father. There are verses in the New Testament too that talk about the love of God one that's quoted all the time is John 3:16, which says, I so love the world that I gave my only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It goes on in verse 17 to say, I did not send my Son to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. We also read in Romans 5 8 that God clearly shows his love and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us so even when we are being wicked God dies for us and sends Jesus to make the sacrifice that's so desperately needed to wash away our sins and bring us holy before the Father in 1 John 4, 19, it says, We love him because he first loved us. And then in verse 10 of the same chapter, it says, In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Do you see, people? He doesn't even just use words but he lives it and acts it out and had this planned from the very foundations of the earth. He knew that as people we would sin against him, that as finite creatures we get things mixed up and sometimes we do the most horrific things even purposely. But there is no doubt if you read these scriptures and study the Bible closely, clearly, and ask God to help you, that God indeed loves us when we're wicked or do wicked things. We are all cut from the same cloth out of Adam and Eve who sinned because that's what our nature was. And God knew that, but he loved us and he sent Jesus to bridge that gap, to make it so that the Holy Spirit could come and live in us and we would be called children of God and then have the power not to sin. Perhaps this is a little bit much and more than what you wanted, but once again, it is giving you food for thought and an encouragement for you that God does love you, that He is a loving God, and He wants us to turn from our ways. Sometimes we think we're not wicked, but even pride is wicked. Pride is saying, I know what's best. I will do what I will do. I don't need God in my life. I'm good to people. I don't do things purposely, and if they are, they're just small things. I have not lied or murder. But folks, we are all wicked. Even when we turn from Him, the Lord says that even one small sin keeps us from Him, for He's a holy God. And it's not because He's mean. He's just stating a fact. Just like I'm stating a fact, oil and water cannot mix. No matter how hard you shake it, it will not mix. So holiness and sin will not mix. 
So God had to make a way to make us holy in nature, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I hope that you learned something today and that you were encouraged and perhaps motivated to study more in the Bible and to turn if you're living in a wicked way or even as Christians when we follow him sometimes we do wicked things but in first John 1 9 it says if we confess our sins he is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness God wants us to be with him well I hope you enjoyed this please leave your comments below leave me any questions concerns and I will look forward to joining you next week when I answer another difficult question until then may God bless you 